Don here in Florida, and today I'm going to do a little improv video. I had to take a uh, 5 8 piece of stock this morning. I had to make uh, a bunch of one inch spacers. They had to be exactly one inch within about a thousandth of each other. And usually this is a pretty straightforward uh, job. You just chuck it up, uh, take your cutoff tool, mark them out at an inch each, or, or use a stop, hit them at an inch each, and, and cut them off, and, and all is well. Uh, this morning when I came out though, I had a little bit of an issue. Uh, I started getting some chatter in my tool. And normally this doesn't happen with this Atlas lathe. It, it's a very clean cutting uh, machine. And so I went through the standard procedure. Um, my work stick out. I made sure that I didn't have much work stick out here and that I was cutting in close to the chuck. This uh, takes out any resonance. And I know in other videos when you see me uh, doing demos on this lathe that I have the work stuck out quite a bit and that's mainly just for camera angles to show you but uh, when I'm actually doing work it's always in real close to Chuck. Um, the other thing I did was make sure that my tool was sharp and that I had a minimum protrusion on the tool. I only have it stuck out exactly what I need from the tool uh, to make the cuts. Uh, this again takes out any resonance. And uh, I also made my, sure my uh, height was correct and I sharpened the tool before I started. So uh, er anything to do with the tool um, was pretty much taken care of. And then, and three, <laughs> doing it the William Shatner way, you know, when he's selling the, the Medicare supplement. William Shatner and Adam West, uh, two greats of the acting world that, uh, <laughs> were tops in my book. I don't know why they weren't more famous than they were. I, I loved Adam West and William Shatner. Anyway, uh, three, uh, making sure my gibs were tight at the cross slide and compound. I actually locked the compound. I always have the, the gib, one or two gibs, actually rock solid tight on this uh, most of the time unless I'm actually doing some angle cuts. And uh, on the cross slide, the gibs, I made sure they were properly adjusted and the cross slide of course is locked in place so everything should be rigid and solid and tight yet I was still getting chatter uh, the only thing left of course is the spindle uh, if the spindle starts getting loose you're gonna get chatter and I haven't had issue with this lathe ever with the spindle being loose but I've used it quite a lot over the last few years without really uh, making any adjustments to it. And we did have about a 30 to 35 degree drop in the ambient temperature. And of course, you know, when the temperature goes down, you have contraction in metals. So I thought maybe we should get in here and check the spindle adjustments and uh, make sure that we have our, our preload set in there so that we aren't getting any, getting any chatter. If we do have some movement in here, then I think we've pretty much found our culprit. So let's get on it and do it. Okay, so to adjust our bearings, we're going to go ahead and get in our Craftsman Lathe Operation Manual. And table of contents, it's going to be right in the beginning. Okay, pass the forward. First chapter, Lathe Care and Construction. Okay, mounting. Construction of the lathe headstock. Lubrication is the first thing that you come across. Okay. See how close headstock spindle, Timken bearings, all about your Timken bearings. And then right here on page nine, this is like the first maintenance chore inside the book. Let's see if we can get that down a little bit more. Adjusting of Timken bearings. Adjustment of Timken bearings. Adjustment of Timken bearing is not often necessary, but if the spindle spins too freely or play is noticeable when the spindle is pushed back and forth, the following simple procedure will adjust the headstock bearings. Run the lathe between 30 minutes and an hour to warm the spindle. A temperature rise of 50 degrees Fahrenheit increases the spindle about two thousandths of an inch between bearings. Then loosen the set screw A. We'll go over and show you that. It's right here, by the way. but. It, that would be the very furthest out collar point. On the thrust nut, be at the extreme left end of the spindle and turn it 
up to a point where no play can be directed in the spindle. Advance this thrust nut 1 16th of a turn past the point. That is equal to two teeth on the spindle gear in order to provide the correct preload. Tighten the set screw. That's it. And it just says to keep it oiled. Um, use motor oil, number 10 motor oil. I use uh, just whey oil. And that's about it. So let's go over and take a look at mine. Okay, aside from your book, to get the information, these are the tools you're going to need. You need a dial indicator to measure the end play on your bearings, a screwdriver to take out the screw in the collar, a tool to turn the collar, and of course a pry bar. So let's go over there and do that. I'm going to use a uh, dial indicator here and set this to zero, and it says we should have a play of two thousands when it's cold or it can have a, a play of two thousands when it's cold okay so these are at dead cold let's see what we're looking at here okay i'm, I'm prying back on the spindle slightly and i'm going to pry forward on it okay so i'm at about two and a half thousandths i guess three thousandths which seems a little loose so let's go ahead and run this for half an hour to an hour and uh, come back and take a look. So before we get started, let's uh, show you the area we're concentrating on. This is the collar right here. This is the screw that we're gonna take out to uh, make the adjustment if necessary. When I, when I pry on this, I don't like going behind the chuck like this because if you go behind the chuck like this, you can actually push the chuck off at an angle which can throw off your reading. You want this to be straight in and out like this. Try not to pry on your gear right here because as you can see, even this large gear, that's a magnet by the way, the same Mac. We don't want to break that. So the place I prefer to pry is right here between the steel collar and this point right here. And it doesn't take a lot, okay? Just that prying right there, I can see the movement. So that's the point we want to be trying to move that at, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way and fire it up and look at the clock. There we go. And we're gonna run that for, for an hour. It's one o'clock right now. So we'll come back in half an hour to an hour to see what our temperature is. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just take some temperature readings here before we get started. And we're only a minute into this now, so. The temperature outside is uh, 78 degrees, 79 degrees. Right now we're at uh, 80 degrees right there. And on the front, uh, also 80 degrees. So, instead it should come up about 50 degrees, so we'll find out. Should have put something in the chuck before we started, but uh, we're well on our way now, so we'll keep her running. Okay, we've been running an hour now, close to an hour, not quite an hour. I'm gonna shut it down here. So it was about uh, 45 to 50 minutes, and looking at our, get this in the, come up uh, almost 20 degrees right there so that's nowhere near the 50 on the front it's come up uh, 17 degrees so 17 and 20 degree rise in temperature that's a far cry from the 50 degrees um, I guess it has a potential to come up 50 degrees so they're saying if it comes up 50 degrees that it would take two thousandths out so I don't imagine two thousandths came out of there get our dial indicator up here and we're going to zero that and let's go ahead and see what we got on the dial indicator here yeah it took some out it took about a thousandths out make sure it doesn't go back any 
Oh yeah, it do does go back, comes back one, two. So we have about three thousandths in there. So, and I'm not really pushing back on that gear right there, that Zamac, I'm just nudging it. Okay, don't ever pry on that. So I'm just nudging that back. And so, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna nudge that back. And I imagine when we start tightening that, it'll come up to the zero, so. So right on the collar here, there's a screw right here. I'm gonna take that out and we're gonna adjust from that point, so. I don't think I can get everything in the picture here. Let's try. Okay, so we're gonna take this out. We wanna bring it up to zero to start with. So give it a little, little nudge here. I'm gonna hold the chuck while I do that. Let's see if that zeroed. All right, and I'm gonna pry from here. Okay, I'm on zero right there. I'm just gonna nudge that back. All right, it's still coming up with some movement here. All right, a little bit more. I'm gonna hold the chuck, get on the collar here. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna move that back out of the way because I need to get another spot here. We'll zero that again. Okay. And just bump it a little bit here. And let's see what we got here. Just gonna move that back a little bit, make sure it's zeroed. All right, and forward, okay. Still getting a slight movement. I am not pushing against that gear, I'm just bumping it slightly. Okay, still moving about a thousandth of that, maybe half a thousandth. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten it just a little bit more. Okay, no movement there, no movement there. Okay, it may be doing a half a thousandth. Tighten it just a little bit more. Okay. Notice I'm I'm just barely moving that when I tighten it. Okay. Looks like that did it. It it's okay, no, maybe not. Again, you gotta really creep up on this. You don't wanna over tighten it, so. There we go. Okay, I've got a, I've got a huge leverage advantage on this, so I'm not gonna I'm not going to go any more on that. I'm going to call that the zero point right there. Okay, so now we need to move this hole over, or this point over, two teeth. And we're lined up almost perfectly with this tooth here. So that's where we're going to start. So that red one's our starting point. And one, two, our blue one is where we will stop so i'm going to go ahead and mark this so you can see it i hope we can see it on the film i'm going to mark the top of the tooth as well so i can see it 
from up where I'm at. All right, and I'm, I'm gonna back this up slightly and I'm gonna lock the back here so nothing moves on me and get my tool on here. And now I'm gonna bring that over to the Bluetooth. I'm gonna turn it one, almost two, just a little bit more. There we go. So now we've brought it over from the red to the blue. So we've brought it over two teeth. That should set our, our preload on our bearings. And right now I'm putting the bar in here. Absolutely zero movement, okay? The bearings feel real nice. And always remember to keep your bearings lubed. I didn't show it when I started, but every day when I come out here, I always, I always start by putting lube in there. And I'm gonna end this by putting lube in there. But first, let's get this screw back in there before we lose it. And there is a little brass plug down behind that screw so you don't ding up the teeth on there. So don't lose that when you're doing this. Okay. And again, last thing I'll do before I get done is I'm going to put some more lube in here. I started my day with some lube and I'm going to end it with some lube. I'm wondering if this only came up between 15 and 20 degrees because of the quality of lube today versus when this machine was built. So let's go ahead and uh, turn it on. Sounds good. Let's see how it performs. All right, so let's see what she'll do on this. Very nice. It, it's curling them chips up nice. There's no jumping. There's no screeching. That's just what I was looking for. So, so earlier in the day, she'd have been scree screaming at me. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave it there. And finish up. All right, so I hope you like my little improv video here on doing a spindle adjustment. I was surprised we found what we did. Um, in some ways I am, in some ways I'm not. Um, it had been about time for an adjustment. And as y'all saw, it's not difficult. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you don't follow this video, follow your book. So I guess that's about it from Florida. Don out.